Hello everybody, Dibs here, and welcome to the next episode of Overvaz Analyze. Today we're going to be looking at some Tracer gameplay, and this is going to be around the mid gold level. We're going to be looking at Raj, who is trying to climb up in the ladder. Um, I got a, another VOD review from him before, and he was actually in silver, so he's been climbing up steadily. And it looks like he's been improving quite a bit, so we're just going to try to look today and see what else he can improve on um, on Numbani. Now most of the time I do King of the Hill, and that's where Tracer is the best, but... We're gonna see how he works on Numbani, or how she works on Numbani. Um, I do feel like she can be pretty tough to play on this map, um, especially when it comes to like these payload maps like Dorado and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes today. All right, so based on what I said before, Numbani is a little bit difficult to attack on um, because of the fact that there's a lot of high ground here. Um, okay, I'm not exactly sure where he's going at the first part. Okay, so he's trying to flank around the side because he, I think he sees a lot of people playing on the top ground. Um, I think he should have just went straight on the ground in the first place, and you didn't really have to go around the stairs onto the right side. Would have got to got to the point faster. Um, and also right there, I think when you were behind the enemy, um, nobody was looking at you. Everybody was focused at the front. So if you're coming back here, you're really quiet, right? Really good position here. And at this point, nobody's looking your way. The widow's looking forward. Right hand's looking forward. If you actually blink around, it notifies the enemy that you're behind them. What you can do is honestly just walk up to them slowly. And then when you get close enough, just put bullets into one of the enemy's heads. And you can pretty much one clip them, I think. All right, so now when you blink, everybody turns around. Everybody can hear you. And they know you're around. So it kind of... You lose the element of surprise when you blink unnecessarily. If nobody's looking at you, don't use... Don't make noise, pretty much. Um, try to be as quiet as you can. Okay, nice job. Ooh, getting off a decent pick. Alright, going for health packs because your healers are down. Nice job. Staying alive as long as possible. And getting for the road. Oh, Reinhardt. Oh, he's almost... He's really weak. Um, right there, I think he could have survived a little bit longer. Or you didn't have to use a recall is what I meant to say. Um, you were really low. I saw that. Um, it might have been really like... Like a reflex for you to recall right here. But if you think about it, nobody is in this on the stairs behind you. And there's a health pack up there. Um... Pretty much nobody's watching that area, and you didn't really have to recall here. Right here, you're pretty weak, 50. You just keep walking up the stairs, keep walking up the stairs, and then just get that health pack, and then you don't have to use your recall. And um, you'll be at 125 life, which is pretty safe. And then you can do a little bit more damage, and then use your recall for something a little bit more um, last minute, or last um, as a last resort. Don't use your recall if you don't have to. All right. so now if somebody was up on the stairs behind you, then sure, you can use your recall because you know you're going to die. Um, but nobody was watching up there, and you're, you're pretty safe, I think. You're pretty safe. But of course, getting taken up by the, by the Hanzo doesn't feel good, right? <laughs> Alright, um... So, first of all, your Zenyatta shouldn't have been up really, really far, and your Roadhog was up far, too. Yeah, the group should have been... regrouping, I think. Alright, so the Winston's down, we're going towards the back. And, uh, trying to see if we can get anybody on the point. And, uh, you did recall a little bit early, in my opinion. This was kind of a, a safe recall, I would say. You definitely could have survived that if you backed up. Um, instead of using your recall, you can just blink. Just blink backwards twice, and then get to the health pack right here. Um, I would say just use a little bit more health packs and use your recall for the last, last resort. Because right now you can't really be aggressive right now, right? You're trying to position yourself, and um, you can't really do much. You're kind of unsafe right at the moment, because you don't have a recall. I mean, you get it at the very, you know, right when you get into battle. Um, but there's something I want to talk about right here as well. When you're attacking a healer in the back line, um, that Mercy doesn't see you. Nobody really sees you here. You're kind of shooting from far away. If you shoot from far away, you're notifying them that you are coming from behind. You want to get a little bit closer before you start shooting because at this range, you're not going to be able to kill the Mercy very quickly. You might, you might even want to blink in. Or I would say I would walk in first, scope around to see if anybody's watching you. And if nobody's watching you, just keep walking forward and just try to kill the Mercy at close range. But if people are looking in your area, you can blink in, try to do a clip, and then recall out again. Um, but at this point, you can't because you don't have a recall because you used it before, right? So it, it's kind of... It's kind of tough. I would honestly just get a little bit closer before you try to kill a healer, especially. I really like the idea of coming up to the top here because of the fact that there's a Hanzo here. Um, allows you to take care of the, uh, the sniper. And I think you could have used the melee as well. Melee is really, really useful. Especially for Tracer. Uh, because of the fact that everybody has low on health every time you get too close or you get close to them. It's right here. Right when he... Right there. You can honestly just use a quick melee right here. Um, just look up, push F. F is my quick melee. It's easier instead of using um, V or C. And then, yeah, just whack him once. And if you did that, I think you would have been able to just uh, bring him down to like less than a bar. And then these bullets would have killed him. And he would have died. You would have been able to pick him up much more quickly, but he got killed, unfortunately. Nice post bomb. Decent one. Didn't get a stick, but... And also there was a, there was a widow right next to you as well. 
peripheral vision could use a little bit of work. Peripheral vision. Um, and also, um, not the mindset, but then like paying attention to everything else that's going on around you. I think you tunnel vision quite a bit. But it's okay. I mean, that takes a little bit of practice. Getting into very tight situations and just trying to focus on many things at once is what you kind of want to be having to do as a tracer. Um, I think tunnel visioning as tracer is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Because when you focus on one thing, something from the side can take you out without you knowing. And um, you have to be aware of everything that's going on at one time, you know, if you want, if you want to play Tracer. Um, you're going to be taken up pretty easily if you don't. So I'll say focus on your awareness if you can. One of the things you should work on. I'm going after Mercy. Really, really low. Okay, got a kill. Nice job. Going for the health pack. Not recalling, which is good. You don't have to recall there. Okay, you're saving your recall. Okay. Not bad. Um, I feel like... You are a little bit uncomfortable of blinking backwards. So what you could be doing against the, um, the Lucio when he's chasing you, or if anybody's chasing you in general, you can be shooting at the same time, and like you can you can continuously look this way, right? And then you can just keep walking backwards, and while shoot, while at while you're at it, shoot the Lucio while he's chasing after you. It would help a lot. You can probably take him out a lot faster that way. And um, I think if a trace uh, if a Lucio is chasing you, and you're shooting at him. While running backwards, if you deal enough damage, he's gonna stop chasing you. And he won't be able to get those free shots off. Instead of flanking around all the way on the right on the left side, there was nobody there on the point or like at this low ground here. Um it's kind of not dang it's not very effective to be pushing up the front as tracer. What you can do is you can actually jump on this. Um even if the payload isn't here, what you can do, you can jump on this little tiny um high ground here. Right here. And you can jump onto the bus. Blink, and you can blink up there again by knocking down the railing, and you can get the high ground very easily. Um, you do know that they have snipers. Snipers are usually going to be holding high ground, and you want to be trying to take them out as, as much as you can as Tracer. Um, it might be seen as Genji's job, but it's both Tracer and Genji's job to take care of snipers, I think. And so you see them up top. If you can take them off the top, it'll be a really big advantage for you, because right now you're kind of open. You have two snipers up top that are <laughs> able to get free rain on your team, um, and it's kind of dangerous for you to be there as well. Alright, recalling. Very dangerous situation. Finding a good way out instead of pushing forward. I would have actually just pushed forward as my gut, but coming back here is actually pretty nice too. Alright, so yeah, just imagine all if you were able to like, you know, deal the damage to the Lucio while walking backwards and shooting at the same time. He might not be there at the moment, you might actually just kill him instead. So try try doing that more. Try to be a little bit more comfortable walking backwards. Um, that means like knowing the map at the back of your hand. And uh, yeah, trying to do that. And uh, yeah, also pay attention to where all the um, the enemy opponents are. So right here. So this is tunnel visioning right here. So there was a little tiny arrow that got that was being shot from the left side. If you saw that, then you know that the Hans is on his left side for sure. Um, it's kind of small, but then I think you're really really focused on the weak the weak right right. But if you can do that, you can just back up, um, make sure not to get picked off by the Hanzo. Hanzo is really scary to deal with in my opinion. Um, he is a prime target for you to try to keep your eye on, no matter what. Nothing special there, I don't know what he was doing there. <laughs> I got a weak Ryan, blinking in, yep, okay. Wait for the target, weak target, nice, nice. Alright, so free, free Ryan pretty much. Okay, looks like your team is cleaning up here, not bad. Going to the back line, watch out for Widow Mines. Widow Mines are very, very dangerous for you in that upcoming patch. Um, they allow you to see through walls. You can be seen by the Widow Mine. Um, whenever they, uh, whenever you're poisoned in the next patch, so it's it's really dangerous to avoid those. Pay attention to the ground um, if they have a widow. I mean, it, it's bright red, so you should be able to see it pretty easily. Okay. All right, backing up. Not too bad. Not too bad. You did use your ult on the Winston a little bit earlier, though. I would try not to use the oof. I would normally try not to use my ults on the Winston unless I have a really, really 100% chance that I'm going to get him. Because if he drops his shield and he's in the shield, I'm trying to break the habit of trying to ult the Winston inside his shield. Because most of the time when you're inside the shield, it's really it's risky because of the fact that you have a really high chance of hitting the shield instead of him. right? And the fact that you're inside the shield kind of puts pressure on you. Like, oh, you have to hit this one. You got to make sure you don't hit the shield. It throws off your aim, personally for me. Um, so I'm trying to make it a rule for myself right now. Whenever Winston has his bubble around him or if he's near it, don't try to ult him in it. Um, most of the time, you end up sticking the shield or missing um, the stick, personally. Something that I'm trying to work on as well. 
So yeah, it's really important for you to kind of group up with your team. Um, while they're grouping up though, what you can do is you can be going on to the top ground, high ground right here. You go to, uh, to the left side, um, to the top and towards the right. It allows you to position yourself, kind of scout out the enemy to see what's going on. And you don't really have to stick with the team all the time, especially as a tracer, you're a flanker, right? Alright, going to the left side. This is what you should be doing a little bit earlier, so you can see what's going on. Yeah, kind of a free kill for them. Um, one way that you can actually get to the Widow, it's good that you're trying to go after the Widow though, because the Widow is a pretty big problem for your team. What you can do is you can actually jump onto the payload here. Right? If you jump on the payload here, here, and jump there, you are able to be seen, but there really isn't much cover that you're getting from here anyway. So if you jump on the payload, you can jump up there much easily, much more easily. Um, but if you, if the payload isn't here, what you can do, you can jump here, just a little tiny ledge here, and jump on the second level. There's three different levels here. You can jump here and then jump on this one and then get to the Widowmaker right away. You can't make this big jump right here. You can't make this jump right here. But you can make the small one right next to it. That works. If you're trying to flank uh, the Widow. A Widow is pretty, is often at that location next to the trees. So I can see why you try to get there. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, go on to the smaller one first, then jump to the taller one instead of it. Okay, so being, you should be aggressive here because you're um, it's in pop-up. Okay, so soldier versus, or tracer versus soldier. There are a few things that I saw here that uh, could have been, that, that are easy fixes, I think. So right here, when you get to the soldier, the first thing you should be worried about is his rockets. His rockets do 120 damage, and uh, you only have 150 life. So basically, if he gets a rocket into you and a headshot, you're dead instantly. So you're being very aggressive here, which is okay, but you gotta be really careful. But you just heard right there that he used his rockets, right? He used his rockets, that means they're, you didn't take any damage either. You still have 150 life. You're at a huge advantage against the soldier right now. Um, let me play it again, so in case you didn't hear it. Right there, you hear the rockets hit somewhere behind you, which is fine because then now you're in a better position against the soldier. You're one on one, his rockets are down, and his healing pad is down, and he only has two bars, so you can actually take him out very quickly here um, if you get pretty good aiming on him. But right now, you're at 93 life. You didn't really have to recall. What I would do is just blink up, top, blink up to the top of the stairs, and then uh, just keep pummeling him, keep pummeling him, and when you get down to maybe about 40, 40, 50 life, and then just try to recall then. Um, you're pretty safe here at this point. You could have taken two headshots and then another extra shot and you still would have been able to survive. You're recalling a little bit too early here. And then your ultimate there as well. I do agree that it's nice to be able to put your ultimate right where the corner is and that's also especially right in the middle of the biotic field because usually the soldier likes to run around the biotic field and try to survive as long as he can. So if you put it right in the middle, if he tries to stay in it, he'll take a lot of damage. And especially if he's in a corner, he doesn't really have much space to run. But the reason is, uh, is that you threw it high in the air, right? You didn't throw it on the ground, like you didn't aim at the ground. I know you could have either tried to stick him or aim it at the ground. There's two things that you can do. Of course, sticking him is the best, um, but if you're not confident in your sticking and you want to throw it on the ground, what you should do is you can blink forward and you can aim it right at the ground. What that does is that it makes it detonate faster. It only starts to um, blink and explode once it contacts something. So if you throw it in the air and he sees it, that extra second that is in the air allows him to react one second longer. And then that's why he was able to run out of the run out and escape the post bomb. So if you throw it right on the ground, imagine that you were right there and you threw it right at the ground. What it would do is it would ex start exploding right away and only give him one second instead of two to react. And then he wouldn't be able to be like, oh, she threw a pulse bomb. By the time he realizes the pulse bomb is on the ground, he'll be dead. But right now he can see it. He sees it coming and then he can just run. He just jumps. Right. So what you want to do is if you want to throw it on the ground, um, what you should do is just basically just throw it right at your feet. <laughs> throw it right at your feet so it explodes faster and then uh, he won't be able to escape. It doesn't have to be only against soldier either. It could be against anybody else. It could be against um, if you are throwing it at a Zarya graph, that helps too. It allows people to not be able to do um, Lucio ults to counter it. Yeah. But um, not too bad, your team was able to push it. And I want to talk about the Zarya graphs. What happens when it comes to Zarya graphs is that whenever your team lands it on the enemy team, and then if you happen to throw your ult high in the air, it allows Lucio to pop his beat one second longer or it gives them more time to react with the beat and also allows diva to use her defense matrix against a bomb that's flying in the air so usually sticking it on the ground allows it to blow up faster and um, it doesn't give time for your enemies to react to it 
But that's what I like to do. You see me most of the time, I throw my ults at the ground or I try to stick somebody. Um, it just m gives him less time to escape. Alright, so I see right here you're on defense as well. Um, I don't really see that much Tracer on defense, which is really nice. I like to see a lot of Tracer on defense. Um, but right here, if you're playing defense, you do not want to be up here. I don't think this would be a good spot for you. It's a good spot for your team. Your team's Ryan should be up here with another DPS, and your healers should be on the left side of the, uh, the ledges on the other side. And where you should be positioned is at the very bottom. Um, there's two floors to this. If you're at the very bottom floor, what you can do is you can hear where they're coming from. You can basically just stand in this little room um, at the entrance, and you can hear if they're going left, you can hear if they're going up the stairs, or you can hear if they're coming directly straight down the middle. Um, you can do that up here, but this is a very common spot for them to attack from. It's very common for them to push up the top. And if you're caught up here by yourself, you're pretty much dead. And you have to give up your spot. And uh, then your enemy team has high ground, and you're kind of screwed because, well, high ground is always good, right? So, um, also, if you are hanging at the bottom, and the enemy team decides to come up here, what you can do is you can just walk up the stairs and you can just flank from behind, take out a healer or two or maybe a DPS if they're not noticing. Um, if you're at the very bottom, you're in a really good flanking position, whether or not they go up top or whether or up they go to the side or to the left. But if you're up here, you can't really flank anybody, um, especially if they go towards the, they come up from the top or if they go from the side. So I always like to hold bottom right here at the very, very uh, below this level if you can. But you're up here, so it's okay. You see, you see what we can work with. And you got a Genji and Alicia up here. Uh, very, very dangerous duo for you to be going against. Um, they can kill you pretty quickly if they dive on you right now. Using your recall a little bit early as well. Um, the thing is, if you use your recall and you're about to retreat, or if you're planning to retreat, don't even use your recall. Right. So right here, you're at 70 life. Right here. Right. Um, if you're going to retreat, like I said, just don't use your recall. Just blink off the ledge. Go for the health pack. Don't use your recall yet. Because what happens if you use your recall? And then they just dash on you right now, right? If the, um, the Lucio comes onto you and then the, the Genji dashes on you, you're at 130 life, you have no recall. And they can chase you pretty easily. I would rather just go for the health pack first and then use your recall second as a last resort if you need to. Going for the Ryan, pretty good. So they have no tank. Going for weak targets here. Naded using your recall right when you get naded, very very smart. So you don't want to take the risk of uh, taking a lot of damage. And clean it up, clean it up. Nice job. All right, good clean up. Not bad. Good defense that you guys uh, were able to do. Picking off weak targets, tracer. You don't want to be going in first, of course. Um, typical tracer, um, one on one, right? So position your positioning yourself again up here. Yeah, your team should honestly be up there instead of you. So nothing really crazy here. Don't know why the enemy Ryan was by himself with the Lucio. Should not be pushing up on his own. Um, but it looks like your team was able to stagger them. They can't really do much at the moment. <laughs> Alright, you got your... Oh, not sure exactly what you're going to be doing here with it. Or if you can. Alright, uh, right, nice job. Okay. You, it's good though. It's smart that you were going to follow up because you know his dash is down. You know his reflex is down. And then if you know they're both down, he can't really escape you. You can't really do much against you. Alright, so his Ryan's right here. He's on his own. Ooh. Oh, nice stick on the Ryan. Nice stick on the Ryan, but... Personal... Okay, well, you did get the the um, the stick on the Genji. Or you killed the Genji, right? But I don't know if that was your intent. Um, I guess you got kind of lucky that the, the Genji was here and he died to your post-bomb. But if you ever want to stick a Ryan, you should be right in front of his face before you try to stick him. Because this is going to happen. If you don't, he has time to react to put a shield up. And it's really quickly. All he has to do is just right click once. Shield goes up and your pulse bond just gets deflected. Or not deflected. It gets uh, mitigated. So, like I said, if you ever want to stick a Ryan, go up into his face. Be right in front of his face before you try to stick him. If you do that, he won't be able to block it with his shield. Alright, so you got a good stick. A lucky stick. on the, the Not a stick, but a lucky kill on the, the Genji. All right, very dangerous situation here because the Hanzo's up top and he can pretty much one-shot you. Good flank, very good flank. Just keeping your distance away from the Ana because you know she has, or you don't know if she has her sleep dart or grenade. I feel like you could have used your melee though a little bit more. I mean, right at this point, I would have blinked forward and tried to melee her. All right, so yeah, the Ana is at two bars or one and a half bars, and this is roughly about thirty to forty life. Um, you can get close enough so you can quick melee her to death. Not exactly sure. I mean, one's not going to kill it, right? But then uh, if you were able to get two of them on her, she would have been able to die without getting the 
um, the Nana Boost on the Reinhardt. So, I mean, they, they, they did kind of waste it, which is kind of good, but I'm not exact. You can't tell, right? Like, if you actually got a pin on one of your targets right there, it would have been really, really bad. And if the Genji would have been able to have one target, one less target to kill, and um, they might have been able to snowball off of that one as well. So, Chua, try to blink a little bit more aggressively. Use your uh, quick melee on weak targets whenever you can. Right, so you're actually on 62 life. Uh, I feel like paying attention to your life is very important as well as Tracer. You need to watch out because both of your healers are down. If you didn't notice right here, the Genji at the top right took up both of your healers. So you are you are basically healerless. You have no healers here on the point and you have 62 health. You have to be very careful. What you can do is you can go towards the back, get some health packs over there, or you can go towards the, um, the small room here as well and get that health pack too. Um, but I did notice that your soldier did pop his healing pad right here. Even if you didn't see it, you could hear it. Um, he popped it on his right side. It's right there, right now. Um, you can just walk into it, get some healing, free healing done, give him some charge, and also allow yourself to survive a little bit longer. Ooh, you're at 6 health right now, and you're still in here. It's just very, very dangerous. You did get healed up, but you, he could have just turned around and just looked at you, and he would have just died, pretty much. <laughs> he would have breathed on you, and you would have died. <laughs> so yeah, pay attention to your life a little bit more as well. Other than a map awareness and what's going on, your life is also one of the most important things to pay attention to. I know it's a lot of things to pay attention to at one time, but that's that's Tracer. You have to watch what's going on, you have to watch your life, you also have to see where you can get protect your heals, and whether or not you have healers on your team that are still alive. A lot of things you gotta take care of. But yeah, one step at a time, of course, one step at a time. Um, but watch your life a little bit more. That's probably more important, I think, than compared to all the other things. Because of course, if you're, late, if you're dead, you can't do anything, right? <laughs> Alright, so they got 30 seconds left. Ooh, okay, you got it right here. Nice. Oh, he did hit you once. You, call. you can stick him here. You can stick him. You can stick him. Ah, I would have stuck him. I definitely would have stuck him. Because in order to kill Ryan, he has 500 life with armor. So what you can do is you put one clip into him. Once you put your, once you finish putting your clip into him um, and you pulse bomb him, he will die. So one full clip with a pulse bomb will kill a Reinhardt. And if you can kill the Reinhardt here, they have no shield, they have no tank. And you were actually in perfect range to do it. Right here is a good range right here too. When he's swinging his hammer, just pop your ult on him. He will die, pretty much. He only has a little bit of armor left. And um, might have been able to slow down the push. You did lose a Mercy right off, the, right off the bat though. And they had a hammer down. Ouch, ouch. Yeah, that hammer down pretty much killed two of your teammates. They might have been able to change the tide right here. It looks like you guys are surviving a little... Uh, no, never mind. Nope. Yeah, it's just you and the tank. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Mm, damn, yeah, it's tough. Um, but yeah, if you have a 1v1 with a Ryan ever, if he's by himself, one clip, put a bomb in him, and he'll die. Reinhardt is a very, 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 very important part and target to take out if you can as Tracer, because it's a free kill basically. Right? You can easily one shot a Ryan or uh, kill a Ryan because of the fact that he's a huge target. Easy to shoot, easy to stick. Once you get the stick off, he's dead, and um, the team has to either fall back or they have to push without a tank. And if they didn't have that shatter, um, I think they would have would have just fell apart right there. <laughs> but it's okay, no problem. Figure out what else we can do here. Um, scary Ryan, back it up, back it up. Okay, so your team is pretty much dead. You don't have anybody here contesting the point with you. I would, I would. I wouldn't try to do anything here. I wouldn't try to do anything there. Because first of all, you're at 75 life. And as Tracer, you do not want to be attacking the enemy team when there is nobody around to distract for you. Um, people think that Tracer is a distraction. She is, for sure. But um, you can also use your team as a distraction. What I like to do as Tracer is if I'm trying to be get behind the enemy lines or try to do some damage, I wait for my enemy or, for, or wait for my team to deal damage to the enemy or to engage the enemy team once they start engaging that's your time to go towards the back because they're kind of distracted they're not going to be they're going to be focused on the main fight that's going on and if you're in the back they're not going to pay attention to you and you can possibly get more kills that way but if you're up here by yourself there's a dead teammate here your team is walking back you saw that the genji wiped out two people um you're basically alone here once you start shooting up here everybody's going to look at you they're going to be like oh there's a tracer up there it's not just going up on her and die all right she'll die all right and you have 75 health very very dangerous very risky move here um, what I would rather do is just blink towards the back, just try to regroup with your team, and that would be a lot safer than uh, just getting picked off by the uh, the Hanzo here. So regroup with your team a little bit more if you can. Mm, 
Okay. Right. Pushing up a little bit far. Yeah, okay, good. I would stand up here. I would stay up high ground. Nice stick, nice stick. Alright, alright. Didn't kill him, but then you did a lot of damage to him. Made him with a lot of heals. Rip. Alright, well, you did kill the Genji, but the Reinhardt just got ulted. He just got nanobladed and just killed everybody here. I would have just backed out, to be honest. Because then he got, um, he got nano, nano boosted. I said, how am I gold healed? It's very dangerous to be in a small room with Reinhardt. If you Reinhardt is in there, just get out of there ASAP. Just get out of there. <laughs> there really is no point for you to be in there with a the Reinhardt. But it's okay. Um, probably you were in the heat of battle and you couldn't really... It's really tough to see, like, make those kind of decisions or split second decisions, right? Um, but you did have a little bit of a toxic teammate telling you to get off the Tracer. I don't think Tracer is a bad idea here. Tracer is pretty good. She's really good on defense if you can um, find the timing on angles to get on the enemy team. Um, but he doesn't really have to voice that. Right? He doesn't really have to voice that, but it's okay. Ooh. And yeah, it does look like the Hanzo is giving you a lot of trouble, though. It does look like the Hanzo is giving you a lot of trouble. If he is, you, I feel like focusing the Hanzo first, or at least keeping tabs on him, will allow you to deal with him a lot better. Because most of these shots are blind shots that you don't see coming. And um, as long as you see where he's coming from, you can dodge him a little bit more, or you can maybe get to the back line and deal with him better. Um, did you guys have a Winston? All right, so let's take a look. Um, the enemy team had really, really squishy targets. The only thing they have that are big are tanks. Um, what could have been done was that your team was pretty, pretty, not anti, not really anti-dive. Um, a Winston would have been good for them. Um, if you feel like you're having a lot of trouble as Tracer, you do have a lot of damage done, but that's not, that means that you have to, you should be killing your targets a little bit more. You have silver eliminations, which is okay. You should always have gold. I feel like Tracer should have gold, but, um, if you have a lot of damage done, if you have more damage done than you do eliminations, that means your target prioritization is a little bit off. You should be going for targets that are a little bit weaker. Because um, right now, that means if you have more damage, you're not killing your targets. You're just putting your pellets into them, and they're not dying. Um, Reaper should be the one having the most damage, and you should be the one having the gold eliminations. Um, it's kind of a small thing to think about, um, but I do feel that your target, target prioritization was okay. A lot of the times you didn't really see too many uh, weak targets, but a lot of the times I think it's because you were dead. So try to survive a little bit longer um, if you can, and it allows you to get more, be more effective as Tracer. But the enemy team could have, it would have done really, really well if you guys had a, a Winston against them, especially the Genji and Hanzo. You can ask your team maybe to switch off the D.Va or the Reinhardt, okay? Because Reinhardt is pretty much just getting dove on the entire time, and he's just dying. Winston would have been better. Winston Diva is really, really strong at the moment. Um, but yeah, if you're having a little bit of trouble against uh, the Hanzo, I would say just try to focus him, see if you can figure out where he is all the time. Um, and also right here, you don't have to be going up the top right here. This is a very, very long way. You can jump on the balcony here, but it doesn't really do much if you're not going up the balcony. You can just go straight forward, just go straight, and it allows you to get towards the back a lot faster, a lot more quickly. <laughs> And also, you recalled a little bit early, I think. She asked a little bit. How much how much life did you have? I think you recalled a little bit too early right there again against Lucio. Lucio can't doesn't have a lot of burst damage. He doesn't have a lot of burst damage. So it hits you for 125. Yeah, you didn't have to recall at all. There's no point for you to recall. It should be, in my opinion, whenever I recall, I recall if I'm like at 50 life or if I take a big chunk of damage all at once, usually. That's when I would recall. Right now, it's a waste of recall. Unfortunate. All right, because right now you have three seconds on cooldown. What you could have done is double blink right there. A little bit uh, too aggressive. I get the, uh, a little bit too aggressive with your shots, shooting from too far of a range, letting them know that you're here. All right, so it would be the perfect situation if you had your recall. Right, because right now in this position you see the Anna. Right, what you can do instead of shooting now, um, you can double blink, get right in front of the Anna's face, and right when she nades you at the very bottom or uh, on the ground. You can just recall it right away because most likely the Anna is going to do that. Make her waste her cooldown and then you get back in again. But right now your recall is on cooldown and it's really dangerous for you to blink in there. Um, that might be the reason why you didn't do it. But again, against healers that are in the back line, get a little bit closer before you try to engage them um, instead of letting them know that you're back here. Because right now she sees you being attacked. She's being attacked and she just just runs and runs and runs and runs. Right? But uh, it's okay. Right there. Also, they have a Junkrat, so I wouldn't be in this small area. Yeah, that feels bad. So against the Junkrat, once you realize they have a Junkrat, you do not want to be at the very bottom here. Because uh, the Junkrat has domination on the point. 
pretty much just traps all over the place. There's grenades flying all over around. Um, and also the Hans is up top. What you could do is once you realize that they have a junk rat, don't stick on the high, uh, low ground. Go on the high ground, go towards up the stairs, all the way towards the back, and get high ground above the junk rat. And also um, stand right next to the Hanzo. You can, it gives you a better chance to deal with the Hanzo as well as the junk rat because the junk rat has to aim upwards. Once you start shooting his nades upwards, he doesn't have really good um, estimation on the projectiles, right? So it's, it's harder for him to aim upwards. Always try to get high ground against the junk rat. Typical rule against the junk rat. And junk rat's gonna be uh, buffed next next patch. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be kind of crazy. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be played a lot more. So one really good tip against junk rat is just get high ground against them, um, especially if he's watching a point on the ground. You guys gonna make it? Got overtime. Ah, oh, he's bad. All right, so you weren't able to get, you guys weren't able to get anything at all, or any uh, any tick. So you can only tie this, which is okay. Um, losing, winning doesn't really matter as long as you are improving or trying to improve. That's all that matters. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunate. I felt that positioning-wise, you could do a lot. You can against lethal targets like Junkrat and Hanzo. Um, you want to be a little bit farther away from the Junkrat and a little bit closer to healers, right? So targets that are not lethal up close. You should get close to them. Targets that are lethal up close, you should not be close to them. It's kind of like, it's something that makes a lot of sense. But then when you're like in the game, it's hard to like think about it like, oh, is this person really effective at close range or is it not, right? And I think Junkrat is going to be one of those players where you do not want to be in his face or in the ground. Um, but it looks like you're switching off into support. Not too bad. I think it's because uh, your team only had one support and you're filling in, which is okay. Not bad. It's good that you're uh, trying to fill in to help the team. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And uh, the Ryan should not be on the point. If you're playing a Bastion, I don't know if you have a mic or anything like that, but if you are able to communicate with your team, your Ryan should be with the Bastion. Um, your Bastion could be set up right here, um, right here at this point right here, right next to the Ryan, and the Ryan could be having his shield up and you could be boosting him at the same time. Or your Ryan could be on the point right on top of you right here, or on that ledge right there. The Ryan on the point is a little, a little iffy. Think. Um, Ryan can definitely defend different locations, and they're all better than being on the point, personally. I think. Um, but just communicate with the team if you can. And um, if you are trying to boost a Bastion, I would stick behind a um, a wall. I would stick behind a wall. Like right here, right here when you're boosting him, just stand right here. Right behind this little edge right here. Because the thing is, you're out in the open right now. What if a Widow goes towards the back and she just peeks once and gets a lucky headshot? Or Hanzo as well. Or Farah. Pharmacy likes to go towards the back. You do not want to be out in the open when you're doing uh, damage boosting somebody and nothing's really going on as well. But I also saw that you pulled out your pistol as well. Um, instead of pulling out your pistol, what you can do is just keep damage boosting the Bastion. Because 30% damage done or 30% extra damage to the Bastion is more than your pistol. Um, you only want to be pulling out your pistol if you're 1v1-ing somebody and nobody is around you to help you. If somebody is around, well, unless if there's like... Maybe if it's like a Lucio, if you're the only support with another Lucio on your team and you're trying to kill somebody, then sure, take out your pistol. You don't want to damage boost a Lucio because that doesn't really do much, right? But if there's like somebody that's on your team like a tank or maybe like a DPS, damage boost a DPS instead of pulling out your pistol. Um, you, you'll, eventually, you'll do more damage over time. So this is a good position to hold right here because you're using the pillar to block damage on your left side. <laughs> it looks like the right head just fell off the map. A little crazy right now, a little hectic. So they got a junk guard as well. Okay. Guardian Angel, yep. So stick on the high ground right here. Very, very nice. I don't play too much of a Mercy, but I um, I think Mercy is one of my go-to healers whenever I'm on defense. Um, I like to play Zenyatta on attack and Mercy on defense if I can. Um, if there is an Ana taken already, but Ana is usually my best support whenever I play. On attack and also on defense. But typically Ana or Mercy is better on defense than, um, than Zenyatta, for sure. Alright, keeping the damage boost on the Bastion, very good. Okay. Not much going on here. Keeping your damage boost on the Bastion because he got naded, which is smart. Alright, so be switched to healing right here. Right, you got stuff going on on the upside. You shouldn't be up here anymore, I think. Um, at this moment, alarm should be going off and you should be dropping down. Um, for one, the Reinhardt was here. There was a Junkrat on the left side. And you have no line of sight of your team to a Guardian Angel. If you are playing 
a mercy. You should be guardian angeling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You should make yourself harder to hit, especially if they have a Junkrat. Um, junkrat grenades are not going to be able to hit you if you're like flying all over the place. I don't think you're using your guardian angel enough. Um, it's really dangerous for you to be up here now because all this Junkrat has to do is aim here and these grenades will just bounce all over this, val uh, this tight walkway and you're going to have a really high chance of getting hit by it if you're up here. So what I would normally do is if I see a Junkrat or anybody shooting at me here, jump down, Guardian Angel to the team on point, and then just Guardian Angel back up, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Makes yourself a little bit harder to hit. Um, most of the time when I play Mercy, I'm not like walking. You don't really want to be walking most of the time. Unless of course you like are playing the um, the Death Ball. If you're playing a Death Ball, sure, and nobody else is split, and your team isn't split up, it's okay for you to kind of like stick with the team. Um, but if your team is spread out, I would say just keep Guardian Angeling back and forth, back and forth. It increases your survivability a lot. A lot. Okay. Yeah, you should be healing them. Yep, nice, nice. Very scary. Okay. Nice. I would have done that too. I would have solo res. Solo res is good because it keeps you alive. Oh, everything is hooked. Oh, everything was all crazy there. A little too crazy there. Um, but instead of actually jumping out, what I would have done was stuck in towards the back, or stick around this area. Because um, it's it's kind of like, it's really difficult here because your team isn't with you, right? Um, but going against the Winston here by himself is less dangerous than being out there with the Junkrat, I think. Personally. Um, personally. And it, it, there's just so much stuff going on here. I, I can't say that you made the wrong move. Because either way, I think you would have died. You would have died either way. That one is tough. That, that's a tough one because the Winston was on you when you're inside, right? But you also want to you want to be out there with all the grenades and stuff flying about. <laughs> but I feel like if the positioning of your team was a little bit better, you would be able to use your Guardian Angel a little bit more. Um, sticking behind corners would have been okay. I, I'm not too sure if you were actually able to stick around the corner. Let me check. So you're dying here. I'm just trying to double check. Okay. Yeah, I think you could you, you could have Guardian Angel here. Guardian Angel towards the Delucio at this point. Um, I know it was kind of hard to see, but if you can, just start Guardian Angel towards Delucio, go around the corner on the backside. And if you're on that corner, you're a lot safer. Okay, yeah. And you ended up dying against the Junkrat, so it's unfortunate. Don't know if you guys are going to be able to hold this. Yeah, 23%. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Got a batch in here, are you able to do it? No. Hammer down. GG. Yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look good. So, yeah, I mean, even if you did survive that, you might have been able to keep your team up. Maybe. It's kind of questionable. That solo res, I felt, the thing is that solo res might have been looked at as something bad, but you were really, really deep in there. And there was so much stuff going on that, <laughs> I think I would have panicked too, and I would have just popped my res too, because there was there was a junkrat tire being thrown, right? And honestly, right here, right when I heard the junkrat tire, I would have just been like, I honestly would have just res here. I would have honestly just res right away. But you were actually able to, you were actually able to live through it before it even exploded, because the bash or the uh, yeah, the bashing was able to take it out. Um, of course, it's kind of tough because I would have done it, but in hindsight. When things are easier to see, the res was not as good as it could have been. Um, you could have saved it, but no, you don't really know that the tire was going to get destroyed, right? For sure. Because it was right in your ear. <laughs> For me, I would have been like, oh, God, I would have died. I would have been dead. <laughs> but yeah, if you, sa if you saved your res, um, you might have been able to survive this as well and then uh, hold it. But like I said, that, that that's a really tough one. A very, very tough one to do. So, um, But it's good. It's really good to see that you are also flexing. And playing other heroes as well. Um, Mercy does take a bit of practice. She is not the easiest hero to play, for sure. Um, a lot of it comes down to decision making. Mechanics are pretty simple. Uh, mechanics are okay. Mechanics are okay, straightforward. But then when it comes to decision making, that's the hardest part when it comes to Mercy. And it's not that easy, um, as people say. Um, but yeah, overall, not too bad. Um, Tracer was decent. I think mostly that you, the things that you really want to focus on Tracer is the, uh, the distance of engagement. Um, whenever you are going against healers in the back and nobody sees you, you want to be a little bit closer before you start engaging. You don't want to be pellet shooting from far range. Um, it gives you a higher chance to kill them if you're up close. And if you're going against targets that are really dangerous up close, 
like a Junkrat. Try to make sure you get high ground. Don't be in front of their face when that happens. And um, yeah, also try to stick high ground as well. If you are high ground as Tracer, it allows you to jump on enemies a lot faster, um, gain more positions more easily. Um, you don't want to be on the ground all the time if you don't have to be. Um, another thing that's important is engaging the enemy whenever your team is with you. You don't want to be engaging the enemy team when you are alone. If you do that, most of the time you will die. Because um, of course, if six people are looking towards your way, you have a really high chance of dying rather than um, having them focus on a big team battle and then you're going towards the back. So I think those are the main important parts that you should uh, to work on. Um, yeah, so the last one was a little bit messy. Not much you could have done about that. Uh, your team was pretty much on the point the whole time. It, maybe if you can tell your team to kind of position in different places, it gives you a better time to play as Mercy to kind of fly around all the time. Um, don't use your damage boost or use your damage boost instead of your pistol unless you're alone. And um, I think it's about it for Mercy. There wasn't really too much on Mercy that you could have done. Um, just yeah, just use your guardian angel a little bit more. Don't don't stand still as uh, mercy. Always be on the run, just not on the run. Always be gliding between targets. Makes it easier for you to survive and harder to hit. All right, so that's gonna be about it for this one. If you guys want to submit your own gameplay, you guys can submit it at dibsgaming.hotmail.com. I do appreciate 720p quality or higher. And if you can actually give me the raw video itself, um, instead of having me down or instead of having me go on YouTube and search it up, it would be a lot easier. So I don't have to re-record it. And I don't have to wait for the buffer and all that kind of stuff. It allows me to easily edit it as well. Um, but yeah, I also do have a stream where you can rack up points and you can use these points to submit your own VOD. And if you use, if you submit those VOD points, um, I can put yours ahead of everybody else's. Um, I kind of like to reward people who are watching the stream as well. And it allows me to kind of sift through um, people who are there on the stream a little bit more active with the community. So yeah, if you can just do that instead as well, um, you can catch my Twitch or my stream at twitch.tv slash d1bz. And other than that, hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching guys and peace out.